we want to evaluate the integral and then determine if the integral is convergent or divergent. The given integral is an improper integral because the upper limit of integration is unbounded or approaching infinity. We begin by writing the improper integral as a limit. The given improper integral is equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 25 to b of e raised to the power of negative square root x. Let's write that as negative x to the power of 1 half divided by the square root of x, which we'll write as x to the power of 1 half, and then we have dx. Notice how we replace the upper limit of integration with b, and then we're taking the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 25 to b. From here, to evaluate the integral, we will have to perform u substitution. We will let u equal the exponent of negative x to the power of 1 half. And therefore, du is equal to the derivative of negative x to the power of 1 half times dx, which is negative 1 half times x to the power of 1 half minus 1, which is negative 1 half times dx, giving us du equals Let's write this as negative one-half times one divided by x to the power of positive one-half times dx. And now let's go back and look at the integral. We can replace negative x to the power of one-half with u, and we're left with one divided by x to the power of one-half dx. So let's go ahead and solve this last equation for one divided by x to the power of one-half dx by multiplying both sides by negative two which gives us negative two du equals one divided by x to the power of one half times dx. Notice negative two times negative one half is positive one. So now we can replace one divided by x to the power of one half dx with negative two du. So this gives us the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral now we need to be careful here with the limits of integration from 25 to b. These are x values, not u values. So I'm gonna write the lower limit as x equals 25 and the upper limit as x equals b. Just to emphasize these are x values, not u values. And again, now we know one divided by x to the power of one half dx is equal to negative du. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor out the negative two Then we have du, and then since u is equal to negative x to the power of one half, the integrand function with respect to u is just e to the u. This gives us negative two times the limit as b approaches infinity of, well the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u, which with respect to x would be e to the power of negative x to the power of one half. And again, the limits integration for x are from 25 to b. For the next step, we determine big F of b minus big F of 25. Well, big F of b is e raised to the power of negative b to the power of 1 half minus big F of 25 is e to the power of negative 25 to the power of 1 half. For the next step, let's rewrite this using positive exponents and also write the exponents of one half back as square roots. So we have negative two times the limit as b approaches infinity of e to the power of negative b to the power of one half is equal to one divided by e raised to the power of square root b. And then we have minus e to the power of negative 25 to the power of one half is equal to one divided by e raised to the power of the square root of 25. And square root of 25 simplifies to five. Now let's determine the limit. As b approaches infinity, one divided by e raised to the power of the square root of b approaches zero because the numerator stays at one and the denominator increases without bound. As b approaches infinity, the exponent on e approaches infinity and therefore e to the square root of b also approaches infinity. And notice one divided by e raised to the power of the square root of 25, or one divided by e to the fifth is not affected by b. And therefore we're left with negative two times 
negative one divided by e to the fifth, which is equal to positive two divided by e to the fifth. So because the limit exists and we have a real value for the improper integral, we say the integral is convergent or converges. If the limit didn't exist because it approached positive or negative infinity, we would say the integral is divergent or diverges. I hope you found this helpful.